It's an incredible feeling to discover something that had been untouched by human hands in centuries, or walking where no person has walked in thousands of years. There's no bigger thrill. And apparently, not just professionals make these kinds of life-changing discoveries. From a city founded by a demigod to the oldest shipwreck ever discovered, here are the 20 most amazing accidental historical discoveries. Number 20. Garrett Graff Garrett Graff was walking through the parking lot with a colleague when he found a curious item that arose his curiosity. As a historian and journalist, he followed his instincts and began a search that led him to find one of the United States government's best-kept secrets. But Garrett Graff and his partner stumbled across a federal employee ID with clear emergency evacuation instructions along with specific coordinates. Specifically, it was a government ID for intelligence personnel. On the back, the instructions filled the entire space, carefully explaining the evacuation process and the destination in case of an emergency. Graf decided to satisfy his curiosity and, using Google Maps, tried to locate the address. Man accidentally uncovered a secret facility that reveals our biggest fear. The directions took him straight to a mountain peak a little over 70 miles away just outside of Washington, D.C., known as Raven Rock. The curious thing was that, at one point, without warning, the path simply ended. Once he got to the mountain, nothing. After a little bit of exploration, he found huge bunker doors and a small guard hut, all fenced in with barbed wire, beyond other concrete doors. But what was it? Well, this place, also known as Site R, turned out to be a real nuclear shelter. His investigation ended up uncovering the contingency plan of the United States government in case of a nuclear war. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Terracotta Army the Terracotta Army was discovered on March 29, 1974, east of Xi'an, the capital of Shaanxi province, by a group of farmers digging a well one mile east of the tomb of Qin Shi Huang in an area known to be rich in underground springs and rivers. During previous centuries, local authorities and various scholars had already reported on several occasions the discovery of fragments of terracotta statues, as well as tiles, bricks, and pieces of masonry from the emperor's necropolis. When the authorities realized the significance of the discovery, archaeologists were sent to excavate the site, which allowed them to discover the largest concentration of terracotta statues ever found in China. A museum has since been built on the site, including a huge hangar covering pit number one, the most important of all. The Terracotta Army is a set of nearly 8,000 statues of soldiers and horses made of terracotta representing the troops of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. They represent a form of funerary art as they were buried in the tombs of the Qin Emperor's mausoleum near the city of Xi'an, Shaanxi, in 210-209 to BC. This buried army, whose statues all have a different face, was intended to protect the deceased emperor in the afterlife. Sadly, though, the farmers that discovered them died poor and without any type of public recognition. Number 18. 1,200 year old Viking sword discovered on Norwegian mountain. If you're a fan of the TV series Vikings, you know that the Vikings were badass. Moreover, the women also seem to be involved in the various battles. That's what the series shows with characters like Torvi or Lagertha, strong heads ready to do anything to defend their family. It's a fascinating period in history, to say the least, which explains the enthusiasm of many fans for this people. That's why, when a walker discovered a weapon supposed to belong to that era, it created a massive buzz on on the internet. A young reindeer hunter found a Viking sword in 2017. It seems to date from the years 850 to 950 AD. A photo was posted on Reddit. On the image, we see a deserted plane and a young man's hand holding a massive sword. It's all rusty, 
but still in very good condition. It's unlikely that the sword has reappeared on the surface due to the movement of stones in the permafrost, but it is very well preserved without any scratches or bends. All the coverings that once adorned the handle are gone, so they were probably made of an organic material like leather or wood. Though we'll never know exactly what happened, this sword provides us a glimpse into the past, capturing a moment when a sword was abandoned or lost on a hill over a thousand years ago. Number 17. The Venus de Milo we are on April 8, 1820, the day of the discovery of the Venus de Milo, the famous statue of the perfect woman who lost her arms. It's now safe at the Louvre Museum in Paris, but for centuries it remained hidden away on the Greek island of Melos formerly known as Milo. The statue was found by a peasant, Yorgos Kentrotas. He was not a specialist in antiquities, not by a long shot. He was just looking for marble pieces and stones to build a low wall in his field. He unearths the bust and then, digging a little deeper, the whole body of this woman in marble appeared. Well, then how did she end up in France? Well, at the time of discovery, a ship in the French Navy appeared to be stopping in Melos. Among the crew was Olivier Voutier, a young cadet who, above all, was passionate about archaeology. Voutier convinced the French ambassador to purchase the statue, and that is how France became the owner of the Venus de Milo. She was sent to Paris as a gift to King Louis XVIII, who, in turn, donated it to the Louvre Museum, where she still is today. I know very well that it's wrong to talk about a lady age, but what experts have calculated is that the Venus was made in the 1st century BC, which makes her more than 2,000 years old. Number 16. 90 Years Since Discovery of Penicillin – Sir Alexander Fleming's Great Accident on September 3, 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming, then aged 47, returned from vacation and resumed his activities in his laboratory at St. Mary's Hospital in London. He then went to check on the petri dishes where he grew cultures of staphylococci in order to study the antibacterial effect of lysozyme, an enzyme present in tears and saliva. He was surprised to see the dishes had been invaded by fluffy colonies of greenish-white mold. They were contaminated by the strains of a microscopic fungus, Penicillum notatum, belonging to his lab neighbor, a young Irish mycologist, Charles J. Latouche, who was working on this mold that caused allergies in asthmatic patients. As he prepared to disinfect his contaminated dishes, Fleming noticed that around the mold colonies, there was a circular area in which the Staphylococcus didn't grow. He hypothesized that a substance secreted by the fungus was responsible for this and gave it the name penicillin. In 1929, he published the first account of the effects of this substance in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology, but it didn't interest many people. It wasn't until World War II, while the Germans were perfecting sulfonamides on their side, that a team of chemists led by Ernst Boris Chain and Howard Walter Florey isolated penicillin, allowing its clinical use. These three researchers were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1945. Number 15. Lascaux Cave the Lascaux Cave was discovered by four teenagers and possibly a dog in the woods near Montignac, a village in Dordogne, France. It was while looking for the underground passage leading to, according to legend, the safe of the Counts of Perigord that they discovered the cave at the end of the summer of 1940, a cave decorated by prehistoric men some 18,000 years ago. Now that's a treasure! But how did it happen, exactly? During a walk in the woods, Marcel's dog fell into a hole. While rescuing him, Marcel saw another, deeper hole. Could this be the entrance to the safe? Excited, he went to get his friends. They made the hole bigger and eventually reached the cave. There, with only the light of their pocket lamp, they discovered dozens of paintings of animals all over the walls. They immediately understood what it was, because at school they learned about other caves discovered in the area. Aware that they had unearthed a treasure, the boys informed their teacher, Leon Laval, who in turn visited the cave and was left completely amazed. The teacher immediately informed Father Henri Broy 
Royal, a specialist in prehistory, who came to authenticate the paintings. The news spread like wildfire. Visitors started flocking by the thousands to contemplate the prehistoric paintings. Today, the cave is closed in order to preserve it. Fortunately, the public can visit an exact replica. Number 14. Farmer finds 15,000-year-old woolly mammoth remains in Michigan field. This is a spectacular discovery made by James Bristle, a farmer from Michigan, U.S. While working on his soybean field on September 28, 2015, the farmer got his hands on a woolly mammoth skeleton. Now, at first, he didn't realize the immensity of his find, mistaking it for an old fence post. Imagine that, but looking closer, he noticed that this was a much more interesting discovery. Two days later, a team of researchers from the University of Michigan went there to decipher the mystery. According to Dr. Daniel Fisher, it's a mammoth that lived 11,000 to 15 15,000 years ago. Although missing the hind limbs, legs, and other assorted parts, compared to other mammoths found in Michigan and surrounding areas, the skeleton is very complete. Besides the quality of preservation, the bones would also have quite an interesting past. Scientists believe that humans were here and may have butchered and stashed the meat so that they could come back later for it. However, these hypotheses remain unsubstantiated. To draw conclusions about these bones and their origins, we need to prove the evidence. Study of these bones may shed light on when humans arrived in the Americas, a topic of debate amongst archaeologists. Number 13. 2. The T-Rex during the summer of 1990, a group of paleontologists were searching for fossils at the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in western South Dakota. When the group was ready to leave at the end of the summer, they saw that they had a flat tire on their truck. While the rest of the group went into town to repair it, Sue Hendrickson decided to explore the nearby cliffs that the group had not checked. As she was walking along the base of a cliff, she discovered some small pieces of bone. Curious, she looked above her to see where the bones had originated. That that's when she noticed much larger bones literally protruding from the wall of the cliff. They turned out to be part of the largest Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton ever discovered. A 65 million year old specimen nicknamed Sue after its discoverer. Remarkably, Sue's skeleton was more than 90% complete and the bones were extremely well preserved. Sue stands at 13 feet tall at the hips and 42 feet long from head to toe, with a 2,000 pound skull and 50 eight teeth. It's a magnificent sight. The dinosaur skeleton was cleaned and transported to the company's Hill City headquarters, and the Institute's president, Peter Larson, announced plans to build a nonprofit museum to display Sue along with other fossils from the Cretaceous period. Now, if you're a Dresden Files fan, you know that Sue's currently at the Field Museum in Chicago, which I actually went on a kind of Dresden Files trip to Chicago several years back and saw her there. So yeah, go check Sue out. Number 12. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone is a block of black granodiorite, very similar to granite, on which is engraved in three different scripts a priestly decree commemorating the ascension to the throne of Pharaoh Ptolemy V, descendant of a general of Alexander the Great. The first part is written in Egyptian hieroglyphics, the second in Demotic Egyptian, and the last in Ancient Greek, but they are all the same text. But who actually found this incredible stone? We can't know for certain, but it's most generally accepted that it was found by accident by soldiers in none other than Napoleon Bonaparte's army during his invasion of Egypt. It's believed they discovered it on July 15, 1799, while digging the foundations of an additional fort near the town of Rashid in the Nile Delta. The officer in charge, Pierre-Francois Bouchard, realized immediately the importance of their discovery. However, when Napoleon was defeated, the Rosetta Stone became the property of the British and was shipped to England in 1802. It wasn't until 20 years later, in 1822, that a young French philologist, Champollion, managed to decipher the hieroglyphics, the meaning of which had been lost with the disappearance of ancient Egyptian civilization in the 4th century BC. In other words, thanks to this one little stone, the meaning of hieroglyphics was recovered. Number 11. The Edinburgh Vaults 
Edinburgh, which was long nicknamed Auld Reeky, broadly the smelly old woman, in reference to its, shall we say, peculiar smell during a time when hygiene was poor and the streets were littered with human excrement and such. Anyway, when Edinburgh expanded between the 18th and 19th centuries, bridges were built to connect the new quarters to the old town. You can therefore access the south of the city from the Royal Mile thanks to the South Bridge and the George IV Bridge. The arches of the bridges are almost all underground and are known as the Edinburgh Vaults. They initially served as warehouses, taverns, various workshops, but following the arrival of Irish refugees, or even Highlanders, deprived of their land, the vaults were gradually transformed into makeshift shelters, real dark and damp hovels. You can imagine, with the lack of ventilation, the deplorable hygiene you could find down there. Eventually, the premises were evacuated, and since then, the vaults had been forgotten about, until the early 1980s, when they were accidentally rediscovered by a former Scottish rugby internationalist, Nori Rowan. In 1989, he used the tunnels to help Romanian rugby player Cristian Raducanu escape the Romanian secret police and seek political asylum. This was weeks before the Romanian revolution of 1989. Number 10. Derinkuyu Underground City In Turkey, in the region of Cappadocia, a man made an improbable discovery while carrying out simple renovation work at home. The story of the discovery of Derinkuyu dates back to 1963, and it is incredible. When a man was carrying out development work in his cellar, he made the most important archaeological discovery of his country's history. He simply gave a hammer blow in the wall, and his surprise was enormous. He discovered a massive room behind his cellar with tunnels leading to other rooms, and then more rooms. I think you know what I'm getting at. After studies carried out by specialists in archaeology, the verdict was clear. It's a real underground ancient city, and it's huge. Darren Kuyu could have easily housed over 20,000 people. It has more than 18 floors, although only five of which are accessible. It is the deepest city in Turkey. It's believed that the city of Derinkuyu was built in the 8th century. In fact, historians and archaeologists have claimed that it was common at the time to build underground cities to protect themselves in the event of war. On each level, there are bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchens. Among the surreal and magnificent places to see at least once in your lifetime, Derinkuyu is one of them. Number 9. Chinese Mummy when most people think of mummies, they imagine the Egyptian culture. But as it turns out, the Egyptians weren't the only ones that preserved their dead. In 2011, an extremely well-preserved 700-year-old mummy of a woman from the Ming Dynasty was discovered. It happened in Taizhou, in eastern China's Jiangsu province. Road workers were clearing land to widen a road. This task involved digging several feet into the ground. They were digging when they hit a large, solid object. They quickly realized it could be an important find, so they contacted a team of archaeologists from the Taizhou Museum to excavate the area. They eventually determined it was a grave, and inside, they found a three-layered coffin. Upon opening the main coffin, archaeologists saw layers of silk and linen covered in a brown liquid. Looking under the sheets, they discovered the amazing remains of a woman. The body was almost entirely intact, including her hair, skin, clothing, and jewelry. Details such as her eyebrows and eyelashes were still perfectly preserved. This discovery taught us a lot about the way of life of people during the Ming Dynasty, but it also sparked many questions. Who was this woman, and how did her mummy remain so well preserved over the centuries? Number 8. Argentinian Farmer Finds Family of 20,000-Year-Old Car-Sized Armadillos Huddled in His Yard a farmer made a startling discovery in Argentina when he stumbled across the fossilized remains of four huge glyptodon specimens in the Valimanca stream while transporting cattle. He was able to see them due to a great drought, which revealed the upper part of the shell of one of the glyptodonts. His name is Juan de Dios Sota, and he says he was taking his cows to graze when he saw an unusual protrusion on the ground and thought it was the carcass of a cow. Once the paleontologists arrived in the area, they 
recovered the fossilized remains and were able to examine the four car-sized glyptodonts that apparently died together. Glyptodonts roamed South America for more than 20 million years and are believed to have gone extinct 10,000 years ago at the hands of early men. They were herbivorous animals and their anatomy was adapted to serve as protection, like turtles, hence their huge and hard shell. In other words, they're basically giant armadillos. These specimens are believed to be at least 20,000 years old. Despite being the size of a car, experts believe they were attacked by a group known as the Terror Birds, a family of flightless carnivorous birds that inhabited most of the Cenozoic. Number 7. Palatial Roman Villa Luke Irwin, a rug designer, was laying electricity cables one day in February 2015 when he struck a cold, flat surface. There, about 18 inches beneath the muddy topsoil of his barn, lay an untouched Roman mosaic with a gorgeous pattern. This ancient design had been unseen for some 1,500 years, and him being an artist himself, he was transfixed by his discovery. The tiles are a mesh of vivid oranges, creams, and grays. The mosaic was extraordinarily well preserved. And treating it just like a giant puzzle, Irwin decided to put all the pieces that had broken away to one side in order to complete the mosaic. Irwin, understanding that where there's an ancient Roman mosaic, there's usually much more underneath the earth, began making phone calls, suspecting that the open countryside surrounding his house may be hiding secrets and treasures the likes of which he could only imagine. And he was right. When a group of archaeologists started digging, his suspicions were confirmed. However, the archaeologists' findings went far beyond anything he had expected. As it turns out, the mosaic formed part of a grand villa which was built sometime between 175 AD and 220 AD and was repeatedly remodeled right up until the mid-4th century. They also found evidence suggesting that it may have been ransacked at around 360 AD before being inhabited again in the following century. Number 6. The Lyceum The site of Aristotle's famous high school, which archaeologists had been looking for for centuries, was discovered in 1996 in the center of Athens during cleaning work on land intended to build a museum of modern art. The irony's big in this one. It was there, near the temple dedicated to Lycian Apollo, which gave its name to the school, that Aristotle founded his academy around 335 BC, after his return from Macedonia. Indeed, after his star pupil Alexander the Great went off to conquer the world, Aristotle finally had some free time. The school was one of the three great philosophical giants of ancient Greece and the first university in the Western world. There, the philosopher taught rhetoric, mathematics, and philosophy to his students. Aristotle dispensing his teachings to his disciples while walking, his school is called peripatetic, from the ancient Greek peripatetikos, meaning who likes to walk while discussing. In addition to the remains of two temples, including that of Apollo, the remains include the ruins of a gymnasium, or palaestra, where students trained in the art of war. This new archaeological park, located a few hundred meters from the Greek parliament, offers about one hectare of greenery, where visitors can once again walk around while talking and take a trip into the world of the Greek philosopher. Number 5. The Dead Sea Scrolls the Dead Sea Scrolls, dated from 150 BC to 70 AD, were discovered in 1947 in Qumran, Jordan, in caves located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea. The origin of the Dead Sea Scrolls remains the subject of scholarly debate to this day. It's believed they are the work of a Jewish population that belonged to a devout, ascetic, and communal sect called the Essenes, one of four distinct Jewish groups living in Judea before and during the Roman era. They include many biblical fragments. These 900 Hebrew and Aramaic manuscripts were discovered between 1947 and 1956 in 11 caves located at the northwestern end of the Dead Sea. The first seven scrolls were discovered in 1946 by Bedouin teenagers that were tending to their goats and sheep near the ancient settlement. One of the youngsters tossed a rock into an opening on the side of a cliff and was 
was very surprised to hear a shattering sound. He and his friends later managed to enter the cave and found a collection of large clay jars, one of which he had shattered with his rock earlier. Seven of those jars contained leather and papyrus scrolls. Once word got out of the discovery, Bedouin treasure hunters and archaeologists unearthed hundreds more, making up the Dead Sea Scrolls. Number 4. The Ruins of Serdica like many other archaeological discoveries found in modern cities, we owe this one to Metro Excavations. This gorgeous ancient Roman amphitheater was found in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, in 2004. In the modern cityscape of Sofia, the ruins lie south of Nyaz Alexander Dondukov Boulevard, between the headquarters of the Goethe Institute and the British Embassy. In July 2006, the creation of the foundations of the Office of the National Electric Company made it possible to unearth new archaeological remains of the building, although at the time it wasn't certain that the Roman structure discovered was part of a large arena. Archaeological evidence, such as coins and ceramics, or a rare bronze medallion of Antinous, shows the amphitheater was built on the ruins of another theater in two stages, from the end of the 3rd century to the beginning of the 4th century, during the reigns of the Roman emperors Diocletian and Constantine the Great. It is ranked among the largest in size in the eastern part of the Roman Empire Empire and is the largest of the Roman amphitheaters in modern Bulgaria. In terms of architecture, the amphitheater was designed to accommodate between 20,000 and 25,000 people. Like the majority of arenas in the Mediterranean region, the Serdica Amphitheater has an east-west orientation. Number 3. Luberan Shipwreck Luberin, which means Grand Cape in Turkish, is an underwater archaeological site located close to the east shore of Ulberin, Turkey in the Mediterranean Sea. There, the wreck of a merchant ship from the Late Bronze Age was found. The wreck, 15 meters long and with a 5 meter high mast, lies more than 40 meters deep. It was excavated from 1984 to 1994. Dating from the late 14th century BC, it is the oldest excavated wreck in the world. This unimaginably valuable wreck was discovered completely by chance in 1982. It was a young Turkish sponge diver who spotted objects that the ship's captain recognized as copper oxide-shaped ingots from the Bronze Age. He quickly informed George Bass, who directed the excavations of the Institute of Nautical Archaeology of A&M University in Texas. The excavations lasted from 1984 to 1994 and proved delicate for several reasons. As the ship rested at 42 meters and 61 meters of depth, the work of the divers was very difficult. In addition, many copper ingots had suffered from their prolonged stay in the sea and their fragility required the use of a special technique to be able to bring them to the surface. A glue was injected into the remains, which hardened after a year under the water. Number 2. The Banwell Caves it is in the small town of Banwell in Somerset in the southwest of England that the Banwell Caves are located. The site comprises two caves, called Banwell Bone Cave and Banwell Stalactite Cave, which lie within the grounds of a large house at the western end of Banwell Hill. As the name suggests, the Stalactite Cave is, well, full of stalactites. And although no stream now runs through the cave, there is a deep lake in one of the chambers. The Bone Cave houses thousands of animal remains. Bison, reindeer, wolves, bears, lions, rhinos, snow foxes, and many more. According to the natural history specialists at the British Museum, these bones date from the Ice Age, that is to say, some 70,000 years ago. This cave was accidentally discovered by miners in 1824 on the lands of George Henry Law, also Bishop of Bath and Wells. The man of the church thought that these animals had been drowned at the time of the flood. It has been classified as a site of scientific interest and an area of natural beauty by the British authorities. Number 1. Herculaneum 
Herculaneum is an ancient Roman city located in the Italian region of Campania, which was destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius in the year 79 AD and preserved for centuries under volcanic debris. The city was small, with an estimated area of 20 hectares, of which about four and a half have been cleared, and an estimated population of 4,000 inhabitants. The city is only partly known. Most of the public or religious buildings are still unknown to this day. Nevertheless, these remarkable ruins brought considerable field knowledge of Roman civilization in the first century because they delivered exceptional archaeological material, in particular wood, and also literary works hitherto unknown in the papyri of the library of the last villa. The discovery of Herculaneum occurred completely by accident in 1709 when a worker was told to drill into the ground to build a well for a monastery. When he hit some pieces of marble, he stopped and told the proper authorities. As its name suggests, the origin of Herculaneum is linked to the mythical figure of the demigod Hercules. According to the legend, Hercules founded the city during his stay in Italy, returning from Spain. As you can see, anyone can make superb archaeological discoveries. What about you? Have you ever found something ancient and fascinating? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.